We're at the southern end of the Dead Sea and it's somewhere over on this side here that Sodom would have been back in the day, the days of Lot, the days of Abraham. And you'll remember the choice that was made as both Abraham and Lot prospered and they had more and more sheep and flocks and Abraham gave Lot a choice. Uh, would you like to be down in the plain? Would you like to be up in the mountains? We need to divide because there's just too much. Uh, there's not enough food for the size of our herds. And uh, Abraham you know, gave Lot the choice and Lot looked at the fertile plain, a uh, lot greener, and thought that is the ideal place to be. Abraham was left in the mountains. He still prospered, but life's more difficult in the mountains as we've driven through them. And you know, the Bedouins here with their goats, with their herds, um, it's not an easy life. But Abraham prospered there. Lot prospered down in the valley, but Lot was also near the town of Sodom. And in Sodom, things went wrong. This is where you find out about God's compassion, but you also find out about compromise. Because God came and visited Abraham up on the mountainside and at the end of the meal, end of time talking together, he said, I need to talk to you because I'm going to go down there to Sodom and I'm going to destroy that town because it is so evil. And Abraham pleads with God and God repents and says, you know, if, if there's only 50, 50 righteous people there, um, I, I, I won't destroy it. And then it dropped down to 10, dropped down to five. You know, they like bargaining. They like haggling here in this part of the world. And Abraham did that with God. But then goes down to Sodom, meets with Lot. There's terrible stuff going on there. Stuff that shouldn't even go in an X-rated movie. Um, and the end of the matter is that Lot and his family are told, you leave town now because it is going to be destroyed. Lot and his wife and his two daughters leave town. They head out away from the, the nice kind of life they've built up there. And God has told them, just head out, don't look back. But sometimes you miss things. Sometimes you yearn for that which you're comfortable with. And even with all that was going on wrong around them, even with all the evil around them, Lot's wife looks back and, according to the book of Genesis, is turned into a pillar of salt. And I guess that story adds strength because when you look over at the Dead Sea here and you look down at the shoreline here, what you see is salt and in parts of it you can see stacks of salt going up there and, and so there's a kind of continual reminder of God's compassion in saying okay these people are evil but if there's only 10 of them I'll still save the city but God's hate of compromise if you want to turn back if you really want the things that you know really aren't good for you that's your choice and uh, a pillar of salt is the memorial to Lot's wife in the Bible. 21st century, here in Jordan, here by the Dead Sea, or where you are right now, we still have that picture of God's love for us, God's compassion for us, God's desire to save us. But we also have the story of compromise, and it is very easy to compromise in today's world. And the choice is really ours. Do we follow God's compassionate way or do we look back and compromise? God gives us the freedom to choose and the choice I seriously want to make is a choice to follow God.